We hear about an RFP, and which is a critical tool for government contracts. Yes. What is this thing, and well, where are they found? First, let me tell you one thing about government contracts. You better learn the acronyms, <laughs> a request for quotation, or an inf information for bid. So you'll hear a lot RFP, RFQ, or IFB. Those are all different sources for the government to go out and ask for you to provide what it would take for you to fulfill a scope of work. So a request for proposal with the government is one that provides exactly the information that will be in the contract if you are determined to receive the award, plus the steps they are going to go through to determine who receives the contract. If it's a competitive one, it'll show all the steps that you go through that they, the agency will go through to determine who is the best company to be awarded this contract. Mm -hmm. That's what a request for proposal is. The uh, small businesses should go after work through requests for proposals and respond properly based on what the proposal is asking the companies to respond. But, Yes, so. it, I know the larger corporations are familiar with the RFPs and they do them all the time. Yes. Is there any help out there for the small business owners to respond to these requests for proposals? Yes, there are. There's uh, several different uh, great websites. For one, the SBA website. They've got a manual on there that helps you understand what's expected when you're preparing a proposal. There's the... And that's SBA.gov. SBA.gov, correct. www.sba.gov. If you go to the, that website and then you have a link on the, uh, the uh, vendor source or vendor information, click on that and then there will be manuals that help you with the, the proposals in different areas of government business. Another great one is www.dcaa.mil. Defense Contract Audit Agency .mil, DCAA. That one has manuals that identify what they look for when they want to see what a compliant proposal is. So if you go and you look at those manuals, it'll tell you what an auditor is trying to find to make sure that the company has met the requirements. That's a great source to kind of use to get your practices started up and to find out uh, what's available. And then there's uh, there's other there's a lot of private firms that have helpful guidelines on their websites and. We have uh, 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 tips and, and helpful information on our website that can be used and mm -hmm. links to different sources to find RFPs and different things. So, well, I, I go out and I look at these and I read th through the instructions and I say, oh, this is a piece of cake. I can do this. Okay. Good. Are there any pitfalls out there? What should I look for well, to know whether I need outside help? First, let me tell you, if, if you're able to look at one of those and say this is a piece of cake, it's obvious you've looked at them before because I can assure you the small business, when they go look at a government contract the first time or a government request for proposal, they are, in my opinion, until you understand the lingo and you understand the structure, they're difficult to figure out what's wanted. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it, you might say, oh, I can easily do this because you understand the scope of work. There's a lot of clauses in there. You may skip over the clause, you don't know them, and then that, you'll just get it and you'll submit a proposal that shows you can do the scope of work. If you don't follow the request for proposal and understand it completely, you're going to not have very much success. So it's very important you understand the full structure of the RFP. And one of the areas that would help also, the government provides request for proposal in what's called the Uniform Contract Format, the UCF, Uniform Contract Format. That is in the FAR Part 15, and it identifies... What is the FAR? Oh, the FAR is the Federal Acquisition Regulation. And where can you find this? You can find that on www.rnet.gov, A-R-N-E-T.gov, and RNET stands for Acquisition Regulation Network, so A-R-N-E-T.gov. And on that uh, website, it identifies the breakout of the uniform contract format. Mm -hmm. and, and the uniform contract format breaks contracts and requests for proposals into sections A through M. That way, when you look at a solicitation, every time you look at section C, you know that's the scope of work. You look at section I, you know that's the clauses. You look at section K, you know that's the reps and certs. Once you become familiar with that structure, then understanding a request for proposal is a lot simpler. Okay.